Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a pass exam question on differentiation. So let's take a look at this question. So question 4 part 1. The curve C has equation y is equal to x divided by 9 plus x squared. We need to use calculus to find the coordinates of the turning points of C. So let's see how this can be done. Let's go back to the paper and pen. So here's the curve equation, y equals x over 9 plus x squared. Now, let's think about what we need in order to work out the coordinates of the turning or stationary points. To work out the coordinates of the turning or stationary points, remember the condition that for any turning point, the gradient of the tangent is zero. So gradient of the tangent implies we need to work out dy over dx, we need to work out the gradient function. So let's work out the gradient function in order for us to apply that condition. So to work out the derivative dy over dx, I have a quotient of two functions. So let's apply the quotient rule. So when applying the quotient rule, we take u to be the term in the numerator and v to be the term in the denominator always. So by quotient rule, so here's the quotient rule, dy over dx and dy over dx is v du over dx minus u dv over dx all over v squared. Now, if you're unaware in terms of how the quotient tool is applied, I have created a video on the quotient rule with additional examples and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. However, let's move on. So, with this rule, we need du over dx and dv over dx. Now, u is the numerator term, u is x which means du over dx, when I differentiate x, it's one. V on the other hand is the denominator term and that being nine plus x squared. And when we calculate dv over dx, when I differentiate nine plus x squared, we get two x. So that is what we get for du over dx and dv over dx. Now, let's replace the data in our quotient rule. So, dy over dx, that is equal to v in this case, v is nine plus x squared, multiply by du over dx being one, minus, so minus, u in this case is x, multiply by dv over dx, that being two x, all over, so let's do that, divided by v squared, v is nine plus x squared with a squared. Let's simplify, so let's, ex let's multiply the brackets in a numerator. So in this case, dy over dx will be nine times one, which is nine, x squared times one, which is x squared, minus, the x times 2x is minus 2x squared all over the 9 plus x squared squared. Now let's go one more stage from here. So let's simplify the numerator even further. So I'll have 9 and if you add the like terms in the numerator, x squared minus 2x squared is minus x squared all over the 9 plus x squared squared term. So that is what we have for dy over dx. So remember what we discussed, we need to use the condition that for any turning point, dy over dx, the gradient of the tangent at that turning point is zero. So remember the condition. So for turning points, the gradient of the tangent dy over dx at any turning point is zero. So we have dy over dx and as a result of the quotient rule it's 9 minus x squared divided by 9 
plus x squared squared. So that's what we have for dy over dx. Let's equate to zero. So that is equal to zero. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. And if I cross multiply here, I'll have nine minus x squared, which is zero. Taking the minus x squared to the right hand side will give me x squared is equal to nine. So therefore, x will be plus or minus root of nine which is plus or minus three. So you have two x uh, coordinates here, plus three and minus three. Now, if we go back to the question, the question says use calculus to find the coordinates of the turning points of C. So if we go back to the paper and pen, we have the x coordinates. We need to work out the corresponding y coordinates. So we're far from finished. So let me continue. Now. We're going to put the x coordinates into the equation of the curve for y in order to work out the corresponding y coordinates. So let's do that. So let me put, so put the x values into y. So remember the equation for y. Let's remind ourselves y is x divided by 9 plus x squared. So it's x divided by 9 plus x squared. And let's first calculate the corresponding y for when x is plus 3. So moving on from there, when x is equal to plus 3, y will then be x replaced by 3 divided by 9 plus, so 9 plus x replaced by 3 squared. And if we simplify this, so we'll have 3 on the top divided by, and 9 plus 3 squared is 18. And 3 over 18, so we can cancel and reduce this to 1 over 6. So 1 over 6 being the y coordinate which, which corresponds to the x coordinate being 3. Now we're not finished yet. We have another x coordinate being minus 3. So let's work out the corresponding y coordinate. So if I put x is equal to minus 3 into the y equation, y will be x being minus 3 divided by 9 plus and x replaced by minus 3 don't forget to square so let's simplify this so we have minus 3 on top all, all over 9 plus minus 3 squared is 18 and we can simplify this minus 3 over 18 can be reduced down to minus 1 over 6. So minus 1 over 6 being the y coordinate which corresponds to minus 3. So let's summarize. So we have two turning points. The first one has coordinates when x is 3, the y coordinate is 1 over 6, and the second point has coordinates when x is minus 3, the y coordinate is minus. 1 over 6. So that completes this part. So that completes part 1 of this question. So let's go back to the screenshot. Now part 2 of the problem. Part 2 is given that y is equal to 1 plus e to the 2x to the power of 3 over 2. So the, cur the equation given is y, which is 1 plus e to the 2x, in brackets, to the power 3 over 2. And we need to find the value of dy over dx at x is equal to half ln 3. So let's see how this is done. Let's go back to the paper and pen. So this is what we have for y. y is in brackets 1 plus e to the 2x to the power of 3 over 2. And we need to work out dy over dx when dx value is half ln 3. 
Now, in order to differentiate such a term, we need to use the chain rule. So if you're unaware of the chain rule, I'll provide a link to a video that I've created on the chain rule with additional examples in the description below. So let me show you how this chain rule works. Now, provided that the term in front of your bracket is a constant. So the term in front of the bracket is one, one is a constant. And if you have a power, here's the chain rule. To work out dy over dx, this is what we do. First, we multiply by the power. So we take that power and then we multi multiply by the power. So three over two times the one in front is three over two into the one plus e to the two x. And then we subtract one from the power. So that will have three over two minus one. So it's normal differentiation so far. And then we multiply by the derivative, so d by dx, of the term within the brackets. And the term within the brackets is 1 plus e to the 2x. So that is the logic behind the chain rule, provided that you have a constant in front and you have a power. So once again, if you're unfamiliar of this chain rule, I'll provide a link to a video which I've created showing how the method works with additional examples in the description below. So let's move on from there. Now, when I differentiate one plus e to the two x, this term over here, we're gonna have two e to the two x. So in this case, let's simplify dy over dx so we have 3 over 2 from here into 1 plus e to the 2x. 3 over 2 minus 1 is half. And when we differentiated this term here, we had 2e to the 2x. Now let's simplify. And we can simplify as this 2 can cancel with this 2 over here. And we're going to have that dy over dx. So let's go the extra stage. dy over dx will be three times e to the two x. So let's collect these terms to give us three e to the two x multiplied by the term remaining from here, which is one plus e to the two x raised to the half. So that is dy over dx. That's the solution for the gradient function. Now, if we go back to the question, we need the value of dy over dx when x is half ln three. So if you go back to the paper in pen, so at x is equal to half ln three. So let's simply replace the x by half ln three to give us dy over dx that is equal to three e to the power two x replaced by half ln 3 multiplied by the 1 plus e to the 2 x here replaced by half ln 3 close bracket raised to the half now let's do some cancellations so these two twos can go as well as these two twos they can go also and e to the ln 3, so if you're aware of this result, e to the ln a is a. So if e to the ln a is a, e to the ln 3 is 3. So we'll have a 3 from here and a 3 from here. So if you go one stage further, dy over dx will be 3 and e to the ln 3, according to this result, is 3 into a 1 plus e to the ln 3, 3 raised to the half. And if we go one stage further to calculate this, you should get an answer for dy over dx of 18. So that should be the solution to part two. Now, not only that's the solution to part two, we've solved the question in its entirety. 
So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, a like rating is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related exercises and I hope to see you again. Thank you.